Hmm. What is up guys, thanks for watching as always. Uh, today we're just making some lures. Uh, we're not going to take you through the entire lure building process, but we are going to make some lures for my upcoming trip to New York and the Netherlands. Uh, we'll be doing some striper fishing in uh, Long Island, as well as uh, oh, we're hopefully doing a variety of fishing in the Netherlands. We've got Northern Pike, uh, sea bass, Xander, maybe redfin perch and asp as well. Uh, but those are going to be a bit on the, on the side. Uh, mainly sea bass, Xander and uh, Northern Pike. But we're actually making some sinking stick baits and I'm redoing a uh, bigger floating stick bait that I've made previously but it's kind of messed up right now. Um, so I'll keep it real short. Uh, the video is going to be just slight processes of the lure building and I'm going to show you what I'm going to take with you with me on the trip. Uh, so let's get going. Alrighty, so first things first. Uh, as always, I usually start with a design on paper makes things a fair bit easier rather than just designing it um, on the wood and um, it allows you to change up the ideas as well so uh, here you see the first cutout that's going to be the sand deal stick bait it's going to be a sinking stick bait we're actually going to make two one I just kind of want to half ass and see how I do it uh, the other one I want to make a decent one because one I'm definitely going to be using it and two it's going to be a gift for a friend of mine uh, that I'll be staying at in the Netherlands as well so bit of a thank you uh, thing but um, yeah here's how we get started on um, the uh, the stick bait uh, we've cut it out with the bandsaw uh, I haven't even paid attention what type of wood this is this was regular scrap wood so I wouldn't have a clue either uh, but I kind of recognized that the, the density was pretty well good enough for um, making a sinking stick bait um, one thing to focus on with sinking stick baits is that you use a wood that's a little bit heavier so you don't have to put as much balancing weight in it. Uh, if you're making a floating stick bait or a floating lure for that matter, make sure that you uh, use a lighter type of wood um, just so that you can put enough balance weight in it to uh, without it actually uh, sinking down. So, bit of a heads up. So we've pretty much carved out the, uh, the shape here and um, wanted to make a couple of slight adjustments along the way but uh, it's looking pretty well perfect for now and then we can just skip into the, uh, the sanding uh, section so um, as always I kind of start with 60 grid um, it's coarse enough to take off uh, edges pretty quickly um, after that I sand it with uh, 300 uh, and after I finish up with the 300, we start drilling the holes for the balancing weights as well as uh, where we want the wire to go through. Now we are actually uh, doing a uh, wire through um, stick bait. It's not going to be screw eyes. Uh, we want it to be very, very um, strong, just in case you hook uh, into a big fish. Um, here we've already made the wires. You can see the other stick bait as well that I've been making. And uh, we've inserted some weights already. We are going a little bit faster than we usually are, but <laughs> there's a lot to talk about before I le I'm leaving uh, for New York, so. Um, we've already put the weight in here. Here we are um, filling up the, um, the weight holes. We've already done that with the super glue and the sawdust, as you know from other videos. And we're doing some foiling as well. Uh, again, this is the bait that is going to go to uh, a friend of mine, so I want it to look really good. I'm taking my time for this one. The other one I didn't really care about. Um, here you see me um, put the uh, the other stick bit that I already hit previously, but that was kind of destroyed. Uh, put in the epoxy. I refoiled it and everything. Sorry about the glare. I didn't see that coming. Don't know why that's happening. Um, and that's the stick bait that I'll be handing to my good friend Rick. So very happy with the result. Uh, swims great. Didn't get any underwater footage. There's too many people in my uh, pool, but <laughs> that's all right. Um, happy camper. All righty, guys. So uh, we only got a little bit of footage of me making the actual lures for the fishing trip. Um, now, the stick baits, as I said, are going to be mainly for um, striper, but we'll also try and um, use them for uh, European sea bass if we can. Uh, European sea bass is a very tough customer. 
Uh, there's not nearly as many fish as there used to be in the Dutch waterways during the, the season. Um, kind of like bad fisheries management in Europe, unfortunately. But um, either way, we'll see how we go. They're very sp uh, specific lures that we use for them. Uh, but this ended up being the uh, the final result of the little stick bait that we made. There we go. Looking really good. Very glad. Um, I've tried to get some um, underwater footage of how it swims. Uh, unfortunately, there have been a lot of uh, families in my testing facility, so I, uh, I eat the pool. So, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get anything yet. But um, it swims really good. I had a um, uh, quick test uh, in the evening when there was nobody in the pool. And unfortunately, can't get any footage in. But uh, it actually swims really good. So on a very slow retrieve, has a really nice wiggle. And when I uh, pause it, it actually wiggles down as a straight flutter down so that's perfect for um, uh, being a signaling stick bait now we also redid my uh, previous stick bait um, that I already made previously sorry um, this is one of my favorite it swims really good it has a really nice uh, darting action and we just had to redo the foil and everything on it because it was so damaged and let me see if that works there we go. So yeah, that swims really good as well. Even though it's got a new epoxy coat. And then this one we just had to go a little bit crazy with because I didn't do a phenomenal job at balancing it out. But it actually swims okay, so not too bad. But that's just a little bit of a camo and foil color that we made. Not the most perfect paint job, but that's all right. Uh, so those are going to be the main lures that I'll be using as homemade lures and um, on the fishing trip. Now obviously we'll be bringing some other stuff as well. So I'll just quickly go through uh, the lures that we'll be bringing as well as uh, some of the rods and uh, why we're bringing them. So I'll just start off with hard baits. Now uh, we're going to be in New York or Long Island for two and a half days. After which I'll be departing uh, fly, uh, onto a flight um, to the Netherlands. Uh, in the Netherlands I'll be for a week, visit my family, but we'll be doing a lot of fishing as well. Um, fishing season right now, our um, European sea bass is going to be the, the main one. Uh, where we'll be fishing, the Zander will be doing quite well, which is basically a, the European walleye. Uh, they grow a little bit bigger, I think, than walleye as well. Um, Pike, Big Northern Pike will be available as well, although with the heat we want to be careful because um, it's very easy to um, over exhaust those fish with the warm weather. Um, there's a chance of catching asp, um, but that's uh, really dependent on uh, the river where we'll be fishing, how much salt water is flowing in and at what point uh, or what stage in the river they will be holding on. Um, and Big Redfin Perch, I think the Netherlands, hands down, has got to be the best perch fishing in the world. And with perch, I mean uh, big redfin perch. Um, pretty much world record size fish are caught there uh, consistently every year. Unfortunately, the best season is actually in the colder months throughout uh, January, February. But we still have a chance of good fish. I mean, those, those fish don't all of a sudden decide to leave the country. Um, they'll be in the same waterways, but the fishing tends to be better for them in the, uh, cold, the colder months. So uh, we'll see. We might catch one, we may not. But uh, our main focus is going to be northern pike, sander, uh, hopefully some sea bass as well. So, uh, Based on that, I'll be bringing this homemade swim bait uh, for uh, northern pike and the canals. This was just an all black one. Very good, caught a lot of bass on it. Already destroyed the uh, the coating on it, as you can see. But one of my, this is probably my favorite swim bait. I can fish it that slow. Has a very good um, side to side action on the slightest twitch. So, great swim bait. Will definitely uh, be good for pike. Um, I'll bring some poppers along as well. This is a little mega bass um, pop max, I believe. What is it? Yeah, pop max. Uh, it's going to be the only popper I'll be bringing because I don't plan on using it 
much, but you never know. Uh, for Northern Pike, maybe even Striper if they sit close to the shore. Um, Mega Bass Eye Loud, haven't fished with this thing a whole lot. But cool little uh, wake bait with a little prop on the back. Uh, Pike will like this as well. Since it's warm weather in the Netherlands, we can expect to catch them on top water as well. But it kind of depends on the circumstances. Uh, same reason, depth bus jet. Wouldn't really use the uh, this particular model for, for striper. Um, it's a bit too bulky, in my opinion. Although, obviously, a big strap will eat it. It's more like the shape rather than the, the size of it. But um, we bring that as well. Uh, we got a whole bunch of top waters like Lucky Craft Sammies that we can bring. Uh, we'll definitely do that for the striper as well. But this is going to be uh, one of the lures that I'll also be bringing that might uh, make the difference. Mega Bass Vision 110. Great lure. Caught a lot of European sea bass on them. Hopefully it will be a hit with the striper as well. So I'll put that aside. Um, this is a rather, rather large jerk bait, kind of like a sand eel model, kind of like a lot of the slender jerk baits are. Might be great for striper as well. There's a Maria uh, Angel Kiss. Great casting lure. Uh, only downside is you kind of have to retrieve them at a high pace because it's a, a quick float lure, so it floats up real quick. Uh, and on top of that, the action isn't super good on a very slow retrieve, so I uh, might have to increase the pace. We'll be bringing a whole bunch of jerk baits, nothing special for the rest. Uh, Mega Baz Vision um, 90, uh, Vision 110 Junior, uh, Mega Baz Edonis, great little lure. Caught a lot of uh, sea bass on that as well, as well as some uh, Dutch sea trout actually, which is not uh, easy to find. Um, all sorts of little jerk baits for a wide variety of situations from small striper to maybe some asp in the Netherlands, um, who knows. But I'll leave that aside for now, not too uh, important to go into the exact detail which jerk baits I'll be bringing because I'll just be bringing a bunch of them. Um, soft plastics however, that's going to be a key feature for both Xander as well as uh, European sea bass. Those are going to be the main lures that I'll be using. Uh, I'll be bringing some, most of it's going to be Kitek actually because I love how slow you can fish him while the tail still kicks. Uh, man, I got all sorts of stuff over here. So I've got the Easy Shiners. Um, this I think is the 4 inch version. It's a tiny little one. I don't know how, how often I'll be using these but what will happen is that if we fish the river on a really strong tide change, um, the current through the river is going to be tremendous so I really need as small of a lure with as heavy of a head as possible so there's at least water, water resistance it'll help us a great deal um, we'll bring some frogs but unfortunately frogs are not the greatest way to hook up onto northern pike of course a bunch of bass on these but uh, we'll see uh, but we'll mainly be focusing on the larger kite packs I think still got them here in the packets so I got some uh, Swing Impact Fats, 4.8 inch. Uh, we got a bunch of them in the tackle box, but uh, these are up there with some of my favorite soft plastic lures. Um, haven't tried them for um, sea bass or for Xander, but I know that Xander love these. Uh, I've seen many, I've heard of many fish being caught on them. And I think the great thing about those plastics is that they're such a obvious 90 degree angle in that paddle to the transition of the tail which really allows these tails to kick at a very slow speed so that's phenomenal uh, we'll be bringing a bunch of these let me see if we can put these back into the um, packet like to keep the tra tail straight as much as possible so. um, one downside to fishing in the Netherlands or at least the spots that we'll be fishing um, is that you do t tend to use a lot of, um, lose a lot of lures when you fish for Xander or uh, sea bass. You'll fish uh, heavy rock piles in the middle of the river and obviously if you're not paying attention that current will drag your lures straight into the rocks and there's no way of getting it out. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll lose a fair couple of lures I can tell you that much. 
Um, not a really, really great bait. Uh, Kitek Easy Shiner, 5 inch. I just showed you the 4 inch one. I don't know, it may, may even be the 3 inch. I'm not 100% sure, but um, yeah, this one's the 5 inch. Great bait. Again, same thing. Little 90 degree angle tail and uh, it kicks at any pace, so that's uh, that's really good. Uh, and then these are the smaller uh, 3.8 inch Kitek uh, Swing Impact Fat. Or Fat Swing Impact, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, colors I don't focus on at all. Uh, there's no reason for me to try and figure out what um, color works best simply because I feel like uh, they'll hit the color regardless if they're going to be hitting that lure on that exact spot at that point in time. So, uh, color you won't see me focus on. Uh, type of lure I definitely will. So, uh, that's it for the soft plastics. Now, thing is, in the Netherlands we uh, fish with very particular types of jig heads, um, different types of uh, shapes and sizes depending on where you fish. Um, so I'll be doing <laughs> some purchases over in the Netherlands. I don't want to be bringing a whole lot of jig heads along, so I'll go from there. Rods I'll be bringing, I'll bring my bait caster. I've actually got a, a bait casting rod uh, in the Netherlands, so I don't have to bring the actual rod, but I will bring the reel, obviously. I got a uh, St. Croix Legend Extreme sitting at home. So that's a, a one-piece bait caster. Uh, I'll be bringing my Daiwa Exist, obviously. Um, that's going to be going with both my Senkra Avid. Uh, and I actually broke my, um, this green rod right here. Oops. This is one of my favorite little rods that I had. Um, Rain's uh, Xander Ringer. Um, had this for a good couple of years now. Caught a lot of fish on it. But I set the hook on the bass recently and on the second piece of the, the rod it actually broke right here. Now I've tried to fix it. I don't know how strong it's going to be. It seems to be holding up alright for now. Um, we'll just have to see. I don't know how often I'm going, to, I'm going to use it, but when I will use it, I'll make sure that I'll fish it just like any rod because I'm not going to fish it as if it might break at any second because there's no point of doing that. So Either it's going to break or it's going to hold up. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll be bringing enough rods to not have to worry about it too much. Yeah. Now, on top of that, I'll be bringing my uh, Daiwa Surtate Custom. It's on the rack right now. Might be a bit of a pain to take it off. But uh, I've had that reel for an ex exceptional amount of time. I think over 13 years right now. Uh, I'll be bringing that with a 10 foot Shimano Speedmaster rod. That's the one sitting right here. Whoops. And I'll be bringing this for both striper as well as maybe sea bass. I prefer fishing lighter for sea bass. But for striper it might be a necessary evil to, to have a 10 foot rod and uh, go from there. It's still a pretty light rod, I will say that. Let me see what it's rated as. This one. Du, du, du. Surely they put the cast. I know that they put the casting weight on there. Oh, here we go. Casting weight is uh, 20 to 50 grams. So I say just under two ounces. So we can cast some a bit more serious uh, hard baits with the with this rod. For, uh, for striper as well. If we end up fishing Montauk, uh, which seems like you have to have some pretty serious gear for it, because there's so many boulders you have to fish over, uh, this might be a rod that might help me do that. So, Either way, um, we'll start packing up here. We're leaving in uh, two days. So, we'll see how we go. But um, I've got my rod tube ready to go. So, exciting stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Oh, before I forget. I bought this little chest mount so that I won't be missing any fish bites this time. <laughs> that will help. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Uh, we'll keep you posted on how we go with the trip. Uh, and obviously you can expect some videos from that for sure. So, stay tuned. Cheers.